There is a virus that's been spreading across America. I'm not sure if you're aware of that, and it's not COVID. Um, chances are you've already been infected with it, and you don't even know about it. The virus really is made up of dangerous ideas, and that's what we're going to be talking about on Wednesday night coming up. It's 7 o'clock on Wednesday nights. We're going to be talking about this. We're going to be using this book called uh, The Secret Battle of Ideas About God. You can actually rent it from the library for free. The library has it. Um, I keep forgetting the name of the app. Uh, Nicole, can you yell it out? Hoopla, Hoopla. So if you have the, uh, the Laredo Library card, you can get the Hoopla app, and you can get this book on there, and you can read it for, for free. Um, but we're going to be exploring a, what it means to have a biblical worldview, um, because it's very important, and it, it, it's, it's, it's vital. And we're going to be comparing a biblical worldview versus the five uh, major worldviews, secularism, uh, postmodernism, new spirituality, Islam, uh, and Marxism are the ones that we're going to be comparing it to and, and answering different questions about what we think, why we think it. So I would really encourage everyone to come out. I, I always say this. I want everybody to be part of a Bible study. I don't want to say, like, if you're going to be part of one Bible study, be part of this one. But it's that important. I really do think so. Especially parents, if you have teenagers, they're going to be joining us in the main uh, portion of the Bible study, and then they're going to have a breakout group where they'll discuss the ideas and things like that as well. But I would encourage you, bring them out. Have them be a part of this. This is important stuff. And the reason why is because we are seeing these ideas at work in our society each and every day. Just read the legislation that's coming up. Just pay attention to headlines. It's all there. And we're being exposed to it. Many of us being infected by it, not even aware of it. So come out, be a part of this study. Um, if you want to buy the books, you can buy them off Amazon. Uh, I don't know how much they are, but you can buy them off Amazon. Again, using the book, The Secret Battle of Ideas About God. This week we'll be uh, covering chapters 1 and 2 um, if you want to read ahead. Also in your bulletin this morning, one of the other things that we uh, talk about monthly is reading the Bible together. Um, I think that's important that we read and study the scriptures together. You're always going to hear me say this, so as long as I'm the pastor here, is get in the Word of God, read it, study it, know it. And so we put together a Bible reading list uh, to help you uh, facilitate that. Uh, pin it to your refrigerator, read it together as a family. Um, if you have the YouVersion Bible, um, on it's the uh, the app on your phone is called YouVersion. Uh, you can actually have the Bible be read to you like, a, like an audio book. And there's several different translations and things as well. So it's so easy now uh, to hear the word of God. And I would encourage you to do that. We're finishing up the book of Job this month. Also beginning Proverbs. And uh, finishing up 1 Corinthians. And then going on through the New Testament there in the letters of Paul. So that's in your bulletins as well. Let's begin our, our message by, by reading our theme verse together. It comes from James chapter 5 and verse 16. Let's put that up on the screen. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is very powerful in its effect. We're in a series about prayer because it is time to pray. We need to humble ourselves in prayer. Open your Bible this morning to the book of James. That's where we're going to be spending our time this morning, in the book of James. Uh, very few people uh, take, well, hopefully, I shouldn't say very few people. I'm assuming this, but hopefully very few people take the fortunes and fortune cookies seriously. I don't know about you, but I, I like getting fortune cookies. I, I, I like the, what they, you know, it's always kind of fun to break them open and see what they say. But we all know they can't predict the future. And I, and I often wonder who is the person who actually writes them um, because it's just very odd some of the things they come up with. But if sometimes, sometimes you can find some good advice in them, like, like this one. No plan will work. If you don't, I think that's a good one. You know, no plan will work if you don't. Um, here's another one. While some dream of a bright future, others are awake making it. I like that. Um, you know, you can do the work, do the hard work. Also, I like that. That's just funny. Pushing your luck does not come as exercise. Um, I, I thought, okay, that's that's pretty good too. Pushing your luck is not exercise. Um, and let's see. You only live once, but if you do it right, once is enough. So just some fortune cookie wisdom there, if you if you will. But what is wisdom? Think about it. What is wisdom? In the Greek, the, the, the Greek word for wisdom is the word sophia. Sophia means wisdom, discretion, the capacity to have understanding and to act wisely, to have insight, to have insight. Wisdom, discretion, capacity for understanding, to act wisely, and to have insight. Wisdom is more than just knowledge. Knowledge might help you win a game show, 
But wisdom is more than just knowing a lot of things. Wisdom is, the, is the, uh, about having the ability to make difficult decisions in difficult circumstances. Wisdom is, is about taking the information that's available to you and making the best possible decision. Wisdom is about leaning on God and waiting for him to give you insight. I boiled this down and I, and I had a thought and I, and I, I liked it. And I, as I was studying about it, I really was impressed with this. Wisdom is gaining God's perspective. Wisdom is gaining God's perspective. James chapter 1 verse 5 brings this out. He says, Now if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives to all generously and ungrudgingly, and it will be given to him. God gives wisdom. Wisdom belongs to God. Wisdom is thinking God's thoughts after him. Wisdom is gaining God's perspective. Do you lack wisdom? I do. Yeah, I do. Do, do, do you lack wisdom? I would say, yeah, yeah, you do. We, we, we need this. We ask God for wisdom, and God gives us wisdom. This really is the essence of prayer. This is why we go to God in prayer, because we don't know what to do. And so we go to God in prayer, asking him, God, what do you want me to do in this situation? It's pretty straightforward. But this next part is interesting, and I want you to see this, because I want you to take notice of it, because I really do think it's amazing. Look how God dispenses his wisdom, according to James 1.5. Look at this. It says, now if any of you lacks wisdom, and, and the answer is, yeah, we all lack wisdom. There are times where we don't know what to do. I don't know if you've ever been there or not. Hopefully you have been humble enough to say, I don't know what to do in this situation. I don't know the direction I should go. Then what should you do? Well, you ask God, who gives to all generously and ungrudgingly and it will be given to him you see God gives wisdom generously what that means is he gives it without reserve God gives out the answers that we need to know when we need to know it God doesn't hold back any information from those who are asking for his wisdom the God who knows everything willingly shares his wisdom with us People, if you ever ask people, what should I do in this situation? Well, people often complicate the request for understanding, the, 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 the request for wisdom. Many times they'll even withhold what they know. We lack wisdom. We don't know what to do. So we go to God, and he gives wisdom generously. Generously. God doesn't play favorites. God doesn't withhold information based on your socioeconomic situation or your race or your gender or anything like that. Maybe we're, we're tempted to think that somehow God plays some sort of favorites, but God doesn't. Maybe we're, we're tempted to think that God gives more people wisdom than he gives us or, or something along that lines. It's not so. God encourages us to ask for wisdom and he will give wisdom generously to all who ask him for it. And he also gives wisdom ungrudgingly ungrudgingly. In the program that I used to write these messages, when I wrote that word ungrudgingly, it kind of put the little red squiggly underneath of it and said, that's not a word. And I, and I said, you know what? It, it probably isn't. Because when I went back to the Greek, the Greek is actually constructed with two words in it, and it's the words not and reprimand. And so it's, it's those two words that appear. So we, we don't really have an English word that fits that Greek word. And so the, the translators, they kind of combined it and said it's, it's ungrudgingly. The ESV, if you use that translation, it says without reproach. The NIV says without finding fault. The NLT says it very interestingly, and, and I like the way the NLT says it. It says this, he will not rebuke you for asking. He will not rebuke you for asking. You see, God doesn't look down on people who ask him for wisdom. He's not like you bunch of dummies. He doesn't act that way. I mean, sometimes I think he probably should, but he, but he doesn't. He doesn't look down on people who ask him for wisdom. I mean, has this ever happened to you, parents? I mean, your kid asks you something, and you've already told them, I don't know, like a bajillion times what to do and, and how to do it, and, you, and you've explained it, and you've explained it, and, you, and you've told them, or maybe teachers, you've been there, uh, you've been teaching this concept for a while, and you're telling them and telling them and telling them, and then they come to you again and they say, what do I do in this? What do I do with this? And you say, how could you not know that? 
You should have known that by now. I've told you what to do. But God doesn't do that to us. God doesn't treat us that way. God doesn't say, I already told you. I'm not telling you again. God gives his wisdom freely and purely and simply and without bargaining. God doesn't make us grovel to receive wisdom. He isn't seeking to humiliate you for asking. He doesn't sneer at us for asking. And he doesn't hold our unworthiness against us. He is ready and willing to give you the wisdom you need to find his plan for your life. What's going on in your life? Do you need wisdom? Do you need wisdom? God encourages you to ask for, for wisdom. Look at this last part of, 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 verse, of verse 5 in James 1. Now, if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives to all generously and ungrudgingly. And look at this last part, and don't miss this. And it will, you can underline that word, will be given to him. See, this is the promise of God. God promises to give wisdom to those who seek wisdom from him. This is a promise. This is the promise of God. God will give you the answer to your prayer for wisdom. Now, here's the reality. We may not always like the answer that he gives us, but he promises to give us the answer. Maybe if we really thought about it, we would be more thankful for the prayers to God that he answers with a, with a no or a wait. Because those no's and those waits, they lead us to a place of wisdom. It's impulsiveness, moving quickly, being reactionary that often lead us into problems and even sin. Sometimes we're told no to things that even may look good to us. But we need to be willing to receive God's wisdom and not lean on our own understanding. In the book of Proverbs, wisdom is personified as a woman. Wisdom is contrasted with the behaviors of a fool. A fool in the scriptures is, is basically someone who's not acting wisely. I'm not going to read the entire chapters to you because we did actually read them. If you were following our, our reading plan, you read them uh, before. But uh, if you haven't read them before, I would encourage you to read Proverbs chapter 8 and 9. You can write that down. Proverbs chapter 8 and 9 and, and read about what is termed lady wisdom. Listen to some of these words. This is Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 32. And now, sons, listen to me. Those who keep my ways are happy. Listen to instruction and be wise. Don't ignore it. Anyone who listens to me, to wisdom, is happy. Watching at my doors every day, waiting by the posts of my doorway. For the one who finds me, the one who finds wisdom, finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. But the one who misses me harms himself. All who, who hate me love death. Wisdom helps us understand what God's doing in our lives. Wisdom guides us to follow God's plan for our life. Wisdom guides us along the paths of righteousness and, and brings us success. God is giving us an amazing opportunity. And this is an opportunity to gain a glimpse and a perspective into what he's doing in us and through us. The question is, are you taking advantage of this opportunity? You see, wisdom is of short supply in our world, isn't it? I mean, yeah, you think so? Is wisdom in short supply in our world? Yeah, I really think so. Just again, read some headlines, pay attention to social media, look at what's going on around you. Wisdom is in short supply in our world. Knowledge has increased, which is very interesting. The Bible talks about a time when knowledge will increase, but wisdom has not increased. You can find out so many things with just a few keystrokes, but wisdom is in short supply. The God of this age has blinded people to the truth, many even professing Christians. And so this is a call to pray for wisdom. And this next part is important too. And, and, and don't miss this, because this is the next couple of verses. And sometimes we read one verse and we just stop there and we don't, we don't continue on. But look at these next verses, because what we're being told is this. Ask God in faith for wisdom. Ask God in faith for wisdom. James chapter 1, verse 6. But let him ask. When you're, when you're praying to God and you say, God, I don't know what to do in this situation. I, I don't know what, where I'm supposed to go. I, I don't know what opportunity. I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. 
What are you supposed to do? You ask in faith, without doubting. For the doubter is like the surging sea, driven and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord, being double-minded and unstable in all his ways. Have you ever been on rough seas? Rough seas? I had, we were on a, the last charter fishing boat that we went out on. We were coming back into Port Aransas. That boat came into that channel sideways, I swear. It came in sideways. The seas were so rough, and the captain was just trying to aim between the rocks, I guess. And he just, we were coming in sideways, and it was just a nasty day on the water. And James paints a vivid picture of this illustration. Uh, the picture of a person who lacks faith, a doubter, is like a ship that's out of control on the, ocean, on the open ocean. The, the rudder is, is broken. The ship is just at the mercy of the currents and the winds. The captain and the crew, they, they can't do anything. They're just kind of hanging on and, and they're just being driven by the wind and the waves. People who do not ask God for wisdom and faith are just like that imperiled ship. They are out of control on the ocean of ideas. Let me say that again. They're out of control on the ocean of ideas. They don't have a, a moral compass that's built by biblical principles. They have no solid foundation on which to stand. They're at the mercy of the Twitter mob, the cancel culture, the political forces and ideas that are out there. There are so many that are in this situation. There are so many professing believers that are in this situation. Just simply not asking God what to do. They're simply choosing to follow the culture, the winds and the currents of the culture, the world's wisdom. They're shopping in the world of ideas to try to find something that makes them feel good and comfortable. Many people, I don't know if you've heard this, maybe hopefully it's, it's not you, but it does happen. Many, te- many people, they, they tell me they're praying about things. Um, but when you find out the direction they've decided to go, you realize they probably weren't praying to God for wisdom because the place that they're going is directly against what God has said in his word. They re- and you realize they're really not praying to seek God for wisdom. What they're praying is this. God, I want you to get on board with my agenda. I want you to do what I want you to do. We're treating God as our servant rather than, he being, than we being his servant. God has revealed so many things to us in his word. But approaching God with that mentality is dangerous. It's unstable. We go to God's word. We seek wisdom of what he wants for our lives, what he desires for us. You see, God isn't going to lead you in a way that is contrary to his word. If we want wisdom, then we must obey him and do what he says. Ask God in faith for wisdom. Look at these verses from Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 3. Happy is a man who finds wisdom and who acquires understanding. For she, for wisdom, is more profitable than silver, and her revenue is better than gold. She is more precious than jewels. Nothing you desire can equal her. Long life is in her right hand. In her left, riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant, and all her paths peaceful. She is a tree of life to those who embrace her, and those who hold on to her are happy. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, how can we say thank you for generously and freely providing us with wisdom? Forgive us, Father, for not coming to you as often as we should to seek wisdom from you. Forgive us for listening to worldly advice and foolishness. We recognize our need for your wisdom. We want success. We want joy. And we know those things are only found in you. Because wisdom belongs to you. We thank you. We thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please keep your your heads bowed and your, your eyes closed. This is a time I like to to call a time of reflection. And the reason why I call it that is because it's a time for you to think about your life, your situation, the quietness of these moments. Brothers and sisters, where are you turning for wisdom? 
Where are you turning for wisdom? I think sometimes we're turning to memes rather than turning to God. I think we're looking to the writings of men rather than the Holy Scriptures. Are we leaning to our own understanding rather than seeking the wisdom that comes from God? Think about it. Think about it. Have you specifically asked God for wisdom concerning any specific matter in the past three days? Just think about it. Just answer that question. I'm sure you've made decisions, undertaken initiatives. If you're seeking, if you're not seeking God routinely for wisdom and faith, I would have to think that you're getting your influences elsewhere. Maybe you have an agenda and you want God to get on board with that rather than getting on board with his. Confess that you don't know. That's part of humility, right? We talked about this, humbling yourselves in prayer. The first part of that is confess that you don't know and seek wisdom from God. Forget what you think you know and ask God to reveal to you the path that you need to walk. So during this time of reflection, Seek wisdom in faith from God. Proverbs 3, 6 says, In all your ways, know him, and he will make your path straight. Before we close this time of reflection, I would have to think there are people either here present this morning or joining us online who are listening to this message who are not in a relationship with God. Let me tell you about who God is and the problem that we have. What causes us to lean on our own understanding, what causes us to reject God's wisdom and pursue the world's ideas and to get lost in that sea of ideas, what causes all that is the sin that's inside of us. It's our sin nature. It leads us in rebellion away from God. It leads you in rebellion away from God. We all had this problem. It's, It's a problem that every person has. It's that sin that separates us from God. But God didn't want to be separated from you. This is amazing. God loved the world. That includes you. And he didn't want us to remain dead in our sins. Sin leads to death. God doesn't want anyone to die because he wants us to be with him. And the good news is that Jesus, who is God, came to earth and took on flesh. Jesus, who is perfect in every way, became the sacrifice for the forgiveness of our sins. Jesus died in our place and rose from the grave to prove that everything he claimed is true. And the Bible says that anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the first step of wisdom. This is the first step of not leaning on your own understanding. The first step is to acknowledge that you need Christ as your Savior. Anyone who calls on Jesus' name will be saved. You'll be forgiven of your sins, and you'll be transformed. And I would have to believe there are people either here today joining us online who need Jesus. You can't work your way to him. You can't be religious enough for him. You can receive the free gift of eternal life through the grace of Jesus Christ. You call on his name. When you do, he hears your prayer. He forgives your sin, and he makes you clean. And your old life will be gone. Your new life will begin. So I urge you, come to Jesus this morning. Pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, forgive me for my sins. Make me clean. I ask Jesus to be my Savior and to be the Lord of my life first in every way. My life is not my own. I give it to you. Thank you for new life. It's in Jesus' name I pray. If you just prayed that prayer for the first time, heads are bowed and eyes are closed, but if you prayed that prayer for the first time, would you raise your hand so that I might pray for you as you begin this new life in Christ? Is there anyone here this morning prayed to receive Christ? 
you're joining us online and you've prayed to receive Christ, I would urge you to get in touch with me. Um, my email address is on our website at uh, www.fbclaredo.org. Email us. Let us know of your decision so we might help you follow in the path of Jesus Christ. Father God, I pray that you would work in our hearts and work on our lives. Father, there are things that we just have to confess we don't know. Sometimes life just seems so overwhelming and we see the decisions that are being made around us and maybe it even just hurts our minds. It says, where are we going? This is a time, Father, where we recognize our need to seek you for wisdom. What should we do? What are we supposed to do? Father, the evil one would have us lean on our own understanding. We know that he is seeking those he will devour and he devours us with foolishness. And your paths, Father, are the ways of wisdom. So we seek you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand to sing.